In this video, we're going to talk about the final piece of this uh, partial recursive puzzle, which is going to be minimization, which is another way that we can compose functions uh, to form new functions. In a previous video, we noticed that we can only define uh, total functions with what we've seen so far. Minimization is going to allow us to define partial functions. Uh, so let's jump in. Minimization uh, deals with um, a function f, which is going to take n plus 1 inputs and give us uh, a single output in return. The minimization with n parameters of f is going to be a function that takes n inputs and gives us one output. So to define minimization, let's consider uh, inputs to f of the form alpha 1 up to alpha n and x. That is to say, we're fixing uh, these, in, uh, these inputs here. So that's n of the inputs are fixed, and then we vary this final one. So minimization then is going to look at all the different variations of this. So I'm going to go alpha 1 up to alpha n. I'm going to try 0 in this place, and that's going to give us some output. We'll call it y0 for now. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing uh, up to alpha n with 1, and that's going to give us uh, some output as well. We'll call that y1, etc. And minimization looks for the first x where the output goes to 0. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. Okay, so, so let's say uh, on this axis we have f of alpha 0. Uh, up to alpha n with x, and then our x-axis is just going to be this x. Okay, and so let's say these results look something like this, right? Uh, so say, uh, so actually let's put a zero here, and then maybe it goes up again, and maybe there's another zero, uh, and then maybe it goes up again, right? So, uh, this is the result that corresponds to y0. So this is like the n alphas with the final input being 0 here, uh, and then incrementing after that. So minimization is going to find this value here. That is the first x uh, where the result goes to 0. OK, let's look at another case, because we haven't considered all the cases here. Um, so again, this axis is going to be our f with our a's, sorry, our alphas, uh, and the x. Uh, so over here, this should have been uh, this should have been a should have been a one, and this axis is still going to be our x's. So what happens if this result never goes to zero? So here, we're just going to say the result is always some constant. Well, what happens here? Well, the minimization is undefined. Okay, so we, do, we just defined, uh, we just found our first partial function, right? Our first function where the result does not necessarily exist. So let's look at an example of this. I know this can seem uh, a bit scary at first, so let's look at some kind of contrived examples, but just kind of work through uh, what minimization is doing. So let's look at uh, our friendly neighborhood projection function. So this is projection 2.2, two, two, so it takes, it takes two inputs and gives us one output. Let's see what happens when we minimize with one argument this function, projection 2.2. Two. So we know from the previous slide that this minimization is something that's going to take one argument and give us one argument back, right? This uh, number here in the minimization is telling us how many arguments the resulting uh, function is going to take. So what does this do? Let's look at an example application. Let's look at mu1 proj22 of 7. Here, minimization is going to try uh, the functions. proj22. So the 7 here is our alphas, right? These are the. This is the fixed input that we're giving to proj. So it has to put seven here. 
and then it's going to try all the other possibilities for the final argument. So it's going to start with zero and see what happens. Uh, and in this case, this is zero. Okay, so minimization is looking for zeros, right? And it's found one, so it's going to say, okay, well, the input, the final input to this uh, proj function that you gave me, uh, if I make that final input zero, it makes me zero. So my result is zero. Uh, let's look now at proj21. Similarly, takes two inputs, gives us one output back. And the minimization with one argument of proj21, again, is going to take a single argument and give us uh, a single argument back. So uh, let's look at let's an example. So we'll do uh, mu1 of proj21. Let's give it now 1, right? And let's see what happens. So minimization is going to try uh, proj21, and it's going to have to use uh, the fixed arguments. And then for the final argument, the second argument of proj22, of proj21, sorry, is going to try 0. And let's see what this is. This is, of course, 1. OK, so it tries again with another final argument. And this is, of course, 1 again. And you see um, that actually Proj21 doesn't care about the last argument, right? It only cares about this first argument. So this is never going to change. This is always going to be 1. We're never going to reach a 0 at the end. So this result is undefined. All right, so that's all well and good. We've just defined our first uh, partial function using the partial recursive functions, but this doesn't seem useful at all. Why do we want to do this? Let's look at a more practical example. Uh, so we're gonna look at integer division. So what is integer division? Well, for any um, a and b, we can say that a is equal to some integer number of b's plus a remainder, right? And we're going to say that this remainder is less than or equal to zero and strictly less than b, right? If uh, if r was less than zero, then we would have overestimated this quotient here. And uh, if r was greater than or equal to b, then we would have underestimated our quotient, right? So this is just division uh, as we're familiar with. But how is this a minimization problem? Well, let's see. It's certainly the case that q times b is going to be, uh, looking at this equation here, it's going to be less than or equal to a, right? Um, if r is 0, then it's going to be equal to a. And if r is non-zero, then it's going to be less than a. So this is certainly true, but this is going to be true for uh, the actual quotient and anything less than the actual quotient. So uh, our quotient is the, uh, the greatest q such that this holds. Okay, but this isn't a minimization problem yet. This is more of a maximization problem, right? Greatest q, that's no good. Uh, let's have a look at what happens if we say uh, q plus 1 times b. Uh, well, this equals uh, qb plus b, which is uh, strictly greater than QB plus R, right? Because B is strictly greater than R. QB plus R. And that is equal to A. So now we can say Q plus 1 times B is strictly greater than A. And with a bit of thought, we can see that uh, this quotient is actually the lowest Q such that this holds. And I encourage you to, to stop for a moment, just make sure that, that makes sense. Uh, this is just a property of division here. So now we have a minimization problem. We've, we've turned integer division into a minimization problem, which is obviously incredibly exciting. So let's see how we can use that along with this, uh, this process of minimization and to actually create an integer division function. Okay, so in the last video, I challenged you to define these two functions here. Uh, is zero, which takes a single argument and outputs one, if that argument was zero and outputs zero otherwise, and less than or equal, which takes two arguments and outputs one, if the first argument is less than or equal to the second and zero otherwise. Obviously, there's many ways of, of defining these functions, 
uh, but I've, I've put some, I've put two definitions here just, just to prove to you that it's possible to do this uh, using the primitive recursive functions. Okay, so we've said that we want our division a div b to be the lowest q such that q plus 1 times b is greater than a. We're looking for some function here, we can call it f, which is going to be uh, clearly we have three parameters, right? A, B, and Q. Uh, and we want this to be a function from those three parameters to a single number. Okay, so we want F of some given A, B, and Q to be equal to, let's say, 1 in all cases where our condition here is not met, right? It's not met whenever uh, this is less than or equal to a, right? Uh, and it's met, of course, when that is not the case. All right, so with this function, we're going to be able to say that mu with two fixed inputs of f is going to be our division function. Uh, but first of all, uh, I encourage you to pause the video here and see if you can define this f function just using the primitive recursive functions and these functions that we have defined before. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this here. So we're going to say f of a, b, q equals uh, less than or equal the multiplication of the successor of q and b, right? This is this bit here, and uh, a. Okay, so how can we write f now as uh, some composition? Well, we can do this just like so, less than equal composed with Malt composed with, uh, we need the successor of Q and B. So that is uh, successor composed with the third argument of this three argument function. So proj three, three. And uh, the second argument of this three argument function. So proj three, two. So that's our uh, the result of our multiplication and then uh, of course we need finally the a here which is the first argument of our three argument function all right so that's a bit of a mouthful but you can see that we've defined our f function here just in terms of the primitive recursive functions and now if we minimize that we're going to give it two fixed arguments those fixed arguments are going to be our a and our b, and minimization is going to find the lowest q such that this uh, condition holds, right? Such that we get zero as a result. So this is a function from two inputs to one output, and is our div function. Uh, so here's that written out, a bit of a neater form. Okay, so let's test this with something that we know should work. So let's do div of uh, 8 and say 5. So this is going to be the minimization of this big f function here, right? So this whole thing here is f. So we're going to try, uh, when, when we do the minimization here, uh, minimization is going to try f of 8, 5, 0 equals, let's see, uh, that is less than equal of the uh, multiplication of the successor of the third argument, which is this one, and uh, the second argument, which is this, and finally uh, the proj31, which is our first argument, which is 8, uh, which is less than or equal, uh, this becomes 5, and this is 8, uh, and this is true, which is not equal to 0, 
so we move on. Let's try again. 8, 5, 1 is less than equal uh, malt. This is going to be uh, the successor of our third argument now, which is 2 now. Successor of 1 is 2. And again, 5 and again, 8. And this is going to go to 10. And now this goes to 0, right? Because 10 obviously is not less than 8. And so the result that minimization returns is this one here, which is the final argument that it's passed in. So the result div of 8 and 5 equals 1. All right, perfect. That's what we want, right? But of course, we know division is not a total function. Division is a partial function. Let's look at what happens when we try to do uh, division of 8 by 0. Uh, again, uh, this, let's see, this whole thing here, oh my word, this whole thing here is our f function. So minimization is going to try f of 8, 0, 0. And that's going to be less than or equal our multiplication of uh, the successor of our final argument and our second argument, which is zero. And finally, the, the third, sorry, the first argument, which is, of course, eight. Uh, this is going to go to zero. And so this is going to be true. Uh, so, of course, this is not zero, so minimization is going to move on. Try some more arguments. Da, da, da. Try the argument one, uh, less than or equal. Let's rush through this now. Eight, and of course, this is going to go to zero again, and we're going to get one again, which is not equal to zero. And so, of course, this is never going to terminate because this is always uh, going to be zero, and so this is always going to be true. So this here is undefined. All right, so that's minimization. And now along with our basic building blocks and our other uh, ways of composing these functions, we've now defined the partial recursive functions. And I'll now make the outrageous claim that these partial recursive functions are the set of every computable function over the natural numbers. To prove that, we would need to define computable, right, which I'm not going to do here, but we can think of our partial recursive functions as a kind of model of computation, right, a kind of model of what we can compute, and we come up with this set of functions. Other models of computation exist, um, noted here are the lambda calculus, Turing machines, and register machines, and it turns out that all these models of computation happen to end up being able to compute the same set of functions as the partial recursive functions. And I hope you'll agree with me that it's really quite incredible that we can define every computable function over the natural numbers just with such a simple construction. This ends our little journey into the partial recursive functions.